Oh, it's nice to see Jamie Rogers for the second time this week. Good morning, Jamie. Good morning, guys. Always How are pleasant. you? Very well. Good. Burning Very questions? We've got some burning questions this week. So let's start off, guys. We did speak about on Monday that if Peter Volandis was to become the chairman of Rugby League, he would look into investing money into suburban grounds. And at that point, we said if he becomes the chairman. Well, oh. he has been named the new chairman. Wanted to ask you boys, what do you think he's going to bring to the game? And after that, what will Peter Le Beattie's legacy be? Oh, I'll go the easy one first. <laughs> what Peter Volandis is going to bring to the yeah. game. Uh, terrific appointment. Uh, he'll be no nonsense. He's mm. going to have to juggle a lot of political footballs in this arena. He'll bring a lot of cost-cutting, I imagine. I don't think it'll be happy days there at the National Rugby League headquarters when he gets a hold of the budgets and has a look at some of the spending there. So I think there'll be some noses out of joints there. He won't mind putting noses out of joint either, uh, Peter Volandis, but he's a can-do man. So mm. I, I look for a blueprint of the game, what the game's going to look like in five and ten years. I'm looking forward to that blueprint from uh, Peter Volandis. But things will start to happen and we will have a future. Mm. Uh, accountability. Uh, accountability is the, the thing that he'll bring uh, to the game across all parts of it, most notably the NRL. Um, and especially around spending uh, and an entrepreneurial spirit, which is what he's shown with the Everest. Yeah, uh, and all the all the all the new product that he's brought to racing in New South Wales. I would love to see something similar to to think outside the box of what has been part you know rugby league for such a long time. I mm. think that there's there's opportunities there. Peter Be uh, Beattie's legacy. Well, that remains to be seen. Um, I think commission reform, if he gets it done. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a commissioner's meeting today. today. Commission reform, if he gets it done, will be a legacy. But apart from that, <clears throat> I'm not so sure. Oh, Jimmy. All right, guys. Well, footy finals is obviously upon us. So looking at the NRL top eight, <laughs> is there a team that made or missed the finals that you didn't expect? What? Only one. <laughs> <laughs> my top eight I know, my list, I've got a few there as well. <laughs> my, my top eight picking wasn't so hot. Uh, look, quite clearly I was... Grossly disappointed with the Newcastle Knights. I was really excited about them mm. this year. I thought it was going to be their year, not to win the comp, but to certainly make their mark and make the top eight. Penrith Panthers were mm -hmm. terribly disappointing, and I still think the North Queensland Cowboys were bitterly disappointed. And the Dragons got oh, through. Oh, yeah, I throw the Dragons in there. And the Dragons are my fourth team. I just didn't want to name my four selections <laughs> yeah. that did not make the top eight, Jimmy. <laughs> oh, yeah, OK. Yeah, yeah. I um, thought three was enough. <laughs> yeah, that's defending your position, isn't it? Um, I think the Dragons, the Dragons and the Panthers for me are the two that, that, that really disappointed. And they both had different reasons, off-field reasons uh, that they could point to. But enough. either way... Um, the team that's made the finals, um, look, I was always confident that the Broncos were going to be good. But to be honest, uh, I had Manly in my eight um, because of the, just the quality players there. But the Eels. The Eels yeah. are the side that's completely, we out the Hawks, completely the outperformed what they were doing with, last year. With basically the same roster. Plus mm. Blake Ferguson. You know, yeah. So, you know, Sivo, the top try scorer, there, he's done a remarkable job, Brad mm. Arthur. Yeah. It, it and, and the players, by the way. Yeah, he has. Um, and we did also have that stat that last time that Para opened up a new stadium, they went on to win yes, the premiership that year. That? So yeah. You just never know. That's when Tuco was out of kicks yeah, at Parramatta. Right. That was <laughs> I did not like that match down there at Cumberland Oval too. No. All right? fair I enough. just wanted to confirm that. Fair I enough. may have flan yeah, fanned, <laughs> fanned the, the flames. Fanned the flames, so to speak, but I certainly didn't like the match. Fair enough. Um, boys, T Rex is back from <laughs> Extinction with Des Hasler now set to bring back Tony Williams for Manley's elimination semi final against the Sharks. He has played only six NRL games in three years. Thoughts on this decision to bring him back? It was a very bare cupboard. It was, they had yes. so many injuries. So it was, you know, the Des went to the extensive. cupboard and there wasn't yeah. much there. And look, he's been playing okay. No guarantee that he's going to be in the 17, he, he, named in Jersey 21. Mm. Um, but I reckon they can, he can do a job for them. I really think he can do a job for them. There's no doubt he can do a job for him. It's just the mental attitude that T-Rex will carry into it. Uh, if mm. rugby league is a sport of redemption, well, Tony Williams could be one of the big final stories. If he yeah. has a barnstorming game and, you know, and, and steamrolls the opposition like we know he can and he's capable of, mm. and Manly advance, he's got to be one of the, the really good, feel-good stories mm. of the mm. opening week of the finals. Mm. But I doubt it. Boys, we'll Sorry swap. to... <laughs> 
I went a damper on the yeah, 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 exactly. yeah. Oh, hang on. I'm pumping up the tyres of T-Rex. Just run the bloody ball, mate. I, that's all I want to see him do. Catch yeah. the ball and run it. All right, guys, we'll swap codes and go to the AFL and Geelong. They've won just three of 13 finals games since 2011. Are they going to be the first minor premiers in AFL history to go out in straight Ooh. sets? They are outsiders against West Coast. I can't believe that West Coast are, uh, are favourites in that no, game. No, and I said that on Monday. I was yeah. surprised to see yeah. Geelong as outsiders, and they have actually been the better back side in terms of where the supports right. come through. Right. <laughs> so it. our customers are with Geelong in this one. I mean, it'd be... It... Oh, look, my opinion on AFL, yeah. you know, like, uh, <laughs> I, I just know that Geelong have been a strong side all year. I yeah. know that the Eagles are defending premiers, but um, I'd be surprised if they were to lose, even though the market says they are going to. Mm. They'd love this to be at Cardinia Park, but they can't Ooh. get a finals <laughs> there. It'd be a co- completely different market, I think, if it would. But yep. certainly, uh, I'll tip the upset. Danger field to do something miraculous for Geelong. Ooh, I like it. Um, boys, we'll go over to cricket. So David Warner, it's been interesting watching his return to the Asher side. He was dismissed for a third consecutive duck mm. on Saturday night. It was the first pair of ducks in a match in Warner's 77 yeah. test career. But I also thought, is it interesting that he has been named again to go into this fifth dead rubber series when you it would might have been a good chance to test out at someone else? Uh, all, everyone else has been tested and they've come up a little no, bit but... short too. Um, Mark Taylor, it was interesting. He got an article today. The former Australian captain said, I would have dropped him. Um, I just thought it was mm. an obvious one to keep playing him because you've retained the urn. It's a flat deck. Yeah, but that's the point because it's a dead rubber. So Yeah, but you want to back your man because you know he's a chance to be back here in Australia scoring runs. It reminds me of, remember when Mark Waugh got four straight ducks? Audi, they called and him. And they were calling him yeah. the Audi. <laughs> yeah. he's a, Davey's a chance to be the Audi. Well, you've drawn the Audi symbol. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, I was, I was You're thinking getting really about into it. Yeah, 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 there there I, I would have played him. We've, we've yeah. retained the Ashes, which is wonderful. Yeah. Uh, it should hopefully yeah. be a flat deck there at the Oval. Um, look, he's got a you got a he's 77 test matches. Mm. He averages, you know, over 45 as an opener. If he you wasn't know? if he wasn't it's, so unpopular, yeah, would we be having this conversation? But it's been interesting though watching the difference between how Steve Smith's performed and how David Warner's performed. And, and this is the Very. problem now with the modern day Ashes series as well. Yeah, there's no tour matches in the old days. They used to have a tour match where, you know, like a Cam Bancroft or even a Usman mm. Kawaja um, would have those chances to make some runs and score those runs. So I'd stick with him. I'll, I'm going to cheer for him. Yeah, I'm with him. Absolutely. I, I'm cheering yeah. for him. Yeah. You yeah. pulling his tail or cheering him? I'll cheer him on. Yeah. Good. Good Roosters fan, Davey, too. I know people love it when you bring that up. So yeah. keep, I'm, keep I'm, you, I'm surrounded by <laughs> feathers. <laughs> surrounded by feathers. Again. <laughs> Thank you, Jamie. Thanks, guys. Have Thanks, a Jamie. You too. 8.30.